be on the lookout for the release of three of R.C. Blake's books, The Father-Daughter Talk, Queenology and Kingology. Now I'm talking the audio versions of these books. They have been done and currently being packaged for you. So if you haven't read any of the books, you can get to listen to the reading of the books and guess what? You can listen on the go. Now don't forget, it's the audio versions of The Father-Daughter Talk, Queenology and Kingology by R.C. Blakes. Be on the lookout, be on the listen out and watch this space. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. is R.C. Blakes and I am so excited today to be able to share with you um, once again. I'm, um, I'm getting a lot of, lot of email, a lot of DMs, a lot of questions and one of the big concerns now is, you know, with, with ladies is why don't men approach me? Why is it that, that, you know, men today seem to, to not approach? And I hope that there's some guys in here today that can attest to some of the things that I'm going to share because I, I want to kind of enlighten you relative to why it's um, a lot different today than it was, um, you know, a couple of decades ago when, when guys, you know, knew how to and understood the responsibility of respectfully and honorably walking up to a woman and approaching her in a way that she could approve. We don't have a lot of that today for, you know, for a lot of different reasons. I think I've just kind of outlined 10 that just kind of um, stand out for me in terms of what I know about, you know, about men, what I know about dating and and what I've learned now it's a lot different today than it was you know back in the day when when I had to approach Lisa a lot different I, I, I admit that a lot different you have uh, you have the online factor you know people are trying to connect online and you know when all of that kind of thing first broke out I was completely and totally against it still not necessarily a big fan of it but I have to admit that I've, um, I've, I've married a few people that have successfully connected online. It's just kind of a different world in that respect. But, you know, the old fashioned way of a man approaching a woman is still the ideal, you know, because it demonstrates a few things that for a man to approach a woman, it demonstrates a few things that an online experience, you know, does not necessarily uh, provide. It, it demonstrates, um, you know, at least it gives a woman an opportunity to measure the pure interest of a man. You know, you know, clo of, of course she has to have her discernment working and her, she has to have her, you know, her thinking cap on. But, you know, a man coming and being man enough to approach um, face to face, uh, gives a woman a chance to really measure his sincere interest in her. It also gives him a chance to demonstrate uh, masculinity. And it gives the woman an opportunity to see, at least have an opportunity to see who the guy really is, as opposed to hiding behind some uh, made up. Um, imagery that online can produce it's still in my opinion the ideal it it gives the woman a chance to feel the real energy of the man again providing she's using her discernment and providing she keeps her thinking cap on and she's not just carried away with 
emotional desperation. But we live in a world now, and this is kind of jumping the gun on some of, or at least one of my points of the 10 that I have for you today. We, we live in a world now that says um, it's not necessary for a man to approach and that it's cool for a woman to, you know, walk up to a man and say, you know, I see what I want, I want what I see, and, you know, I'm going to have you. You my man. Well, you know, you do have some feminine dudes out here that love that masculine energy in a woman that, that takes over and runs the show. And if, if you're a masculine woman and you want a little feminine man, I guess, I guess in some way that dysfunctional situation can become a, a, a workable norm for the two of you. But if you're a real woman and you know, you're in touch with your feminine side and you realize that you're gonna need a real man, the ideal way is for a woman to play her role and to allow a man to step to her. But Bishop Blakes, I don't, nobody's stepping to me. So I'm, I'm getting desperate. I think I'm just gonna shoot my shot. Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 22, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. And because this is a biblical text, we understand that it's uh, coming from the classical aspect of relationships. And so when it says whoso finds a wife, it's not talking about a woman finding another woman. I'm sorry. It's talking about a man finding a woman, a male connecting with a female. So we know here that the Bible is, is promoting the, the male species search out and find the female species for the purposes of marriage. Not, not for the purposes of sex, but for the purposes of marriage. Whoso findeth a wife. And, you know, it's a, we know that this is speaking of the responsibility of the man is to do the, the heavy lifting in terms of connecting with the woman. Because it takes a masculine man to approach a woman honorably. Listen to my wording. It takes a masculine man to approach a woman honorably. You know, any little, any little feminine man can approach a woman, you know, from a perverted platform of just sexual interest. But it takes a masculine man to approach a woman honorably. Now, um, I would say this to you. Number one, I believe... The number one, I believe one of the one of the main reasons, let's put it that way. I just listed it as one. And this is not in sequential order or, you know, um, listed from the, the, the greatest reasons to the to the least reasons. Just kind of randomly. These came to mind. But one of the reasons that great guys, good guys uh, who would be great husbands or would make for great husbands, one of the main reasons you may, they may be in your circle, may even have interest in you and not approach is because they don't have their money right yet. In other words, their finances are not where they deem them necessary to be, to afford you, to honor you, because a masculine man, listen to this very carefully, a masculine man takes his finances very seriously when it comes down to um, his relationship with a woman. A masculine man is not a man, a purely masculine man is not a man that's trying to go 50-50. And, you know, I know a lot of you ladies say, oh, that's the way it should be. God bless you. That's the way you think. Do you. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm teaching you what I've learned. A masculine man is not trying to go 50-50. A masculine man is a man that wants to be able to afford his woman. And there are times that he may have interest in a certain woman, but he won't make, he will not make a move. Now, he'll stay in the mix. He'll try to be around her because he's interested, 
but he'll never he'll he'll never pull the trigger because he does not feel like his money's right. And that's where a lot of you are running into situations where you're actually surrounded by or you have a certain kind a certain man that would make for a great mate in your presence but he's it's like you know he likes you but he's not making a move and you're trying to figure out why and then your mind says well he's not interested um it's because he's he's working to get his money right and you know sometimes you have interest in him and you can feel that he really likes you, uh, but he's not pulling that trigger. And it's because a masculine dude, a masculine dude wants to be able to finance the relationship. Now, he's not a man that's going to try to control you. He's not a man that's going to try to shut your dreams down. He's not a man that's going to try to um, limit your potential. But he is a man that's going to want to be able to hold his own weight and to be able to say that he's doing his part. He's doing what he's supposed to do financially in the relationship. So sometimes that is an issue. The Bible says in first Timothy five and eight. But if any provide not for his own. And especially for those of his own house. He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You know, for you so-called Christian brothers out here who, you know, carrying these Bibles and telling these women, the Bible says you should submit to me and you don't want a job. You need to go sit down somewhere because that is not biblical manhood. Biblical manhood is a brother that says, I need to earn that I might be able to afford my wife. God gave Adam a job before he gave him a wife. So sometimes this guy is in your presence, but he's not pulling the trigger because his money's not right yet. And when you, you know, if you sense that, you know, you have a guy around you and maybe you know enough about him to know maybe he he's a man that is, you know, really ambitious and he's reaching for his dreams and he has goals and he's actually pursuing those goals and he has real plans to go along with those goals. Um, and you have interest in him and y'all talk a lot. Maybe, maybe it, it might be advisable, um, to, you know, shift the conversation to something along the lines of, you know, um, you're being a woman that, um, is built to build, you're made to build. And, you know, when God blesses you with your, your mate, he doesn't necessarily have to come with six figures and he doesn't have to come with the, the bins or the Bentleys. And, and, uh, you know, you just want a man that has an honorable soul, you know, maybe it, maybe it'll help if you're in a situation like that, where you sense this guy really has interest in you, but he's, it's like, he's not pulling the trigger. And it's like you, you, you're stuck in this friend zone. Maybe you need to shift the conversation to something deeper. So as to give him some information that might help him to know that he's not out of the, he's not out of the game because he's not yet reached his ultimate. Because, you know, for me, for instance, um, if I'm broke, if I'm, if I'm out here and I'm single and I'm broke, I promise you, I'm not trying to, I'm really not trying to, um, I'm not trying to reach for a woman that would make wife material. You know what I mean? I, I would have the interest there, but I would, it would be very difficult for me to pull the trigger if I can't pay the bills. And so in a lot of cases, this is why you're dealing with this. Number two, second reason. Um, good guys, husband material, not these clowns out here, not the pickup artists that you all, you know, call your type. And that's all it is. Most of y'all, when you start talking about your type, your type is the pickup artist type. The kind that's going to take you and tell you a whole lot of stuff, bring you to a hotel and, and do whatever, 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 and then disappear, ghost you, and then leave you traumatized. But a good man that would make, make a great husband, why is he not approaching 
a lot of times this guy is conservative. This guy is respectful and he's afraid to offend you. A truly masculine man that um, is balanced and mature is afraid to offend a woman that he's interested in. He will miss the opportunity before he approaches and says the wrong thing that might offend. He will miss the opportunity before he will offend you because a good man has that kind of respect for womanhood. The first mark of manhood, first test of manhood is the capacity to honor and protect womanhood. So when you start talking about a good guy that would make for a great mate, he's very careful not to offend. You know, and he may have it all together. He may have it going on. He may be the six figure guy. He may be good looking and he may have all of this stuff working, but he's not driven by his ego. He's driven by his character. Any man that's driven by his ego lacks character. You can't be a man of character and out of control ego at the same time. And so for a lot of women, what you call your type is a man that's driven by his ego and his character is drained. But a man that's full of character, his ego is in check. But unfortunately, so he's, he's conservative and he's, he's respectful sometimes to a fault. And he's afraid to offend you. Unfortunately, we live in a culture that says, watch this, listen to this very carefully because it's true. We live in a culture that says a man is uh, a creep. A man is a pervert. Um, he's a predator, even if he speaks to you. So if a man says, hello, you know, in a lot of cases, we have women who have been broken by men to the point now that, you know, you're offended that a man said hello. And then you pass by, you look, you scowl at a man that says hello to you. And then you get on the phone with your girlfriends and you say, you know, nobody's approaching me. So we, we have, you know, women who are taught that it, you know, it is less than virtuous. Watch this. We, we live in a culture that says a man is, is creepy if he even speaks. God forbid he looks at you. You know, you know, he's a pervert. He's looking at me. You know, he spoke to me. He said, hello. Ooh, he's a creepy guy. And then on top of that, we're teaching women that it's less than virtuous to even smile at a man. You, you, you dare not speak to a man. You dare not say hello to a man. You know, if a man says hello to you, you dare not say hello back and smile. You're less than virtuous. And then we say, why is it that, why is it that men are not approaching women? I, I submit to you that men are approaching all day long with honorable intentions, but we have twisted we have twisted the social rules up so much that we say if a man speaks, he's getting he's he, he's disrespectful. He's getting out of the way with me. And, you, you know, if 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 a man speaks and you actually like the way he looks and he's not even he's just being polite. Society then says, especially in the church, if you speak back and if you smile, you're a loose woman. You see, the reality is this. Here's here's the balance. Men and women, it's yin and yang. Men and women have roles to play in this process of connecting. And this is what I believe. These are my feelings. These are my beliefs. Men pursue, but women have to approve. Men pursue, but women have to approve. So it's not enough for a man that may be interested in you to say hello. You know what I mean? Or, um, hi, you know, how, how, and how's your day going? It's not enough for him to do that. And then for you to, uh, who you, who you talking to me? Uh, I'm all right. And, and then frown up and then walk off. 
Men pursue, but women must approve. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Can I say to you, now you all know that I, that, you know, it's just it's like God has just given me daughters and sisters all around the world that I speak to and speak into the lives of. But can I tell you, there are a lot of you who are just not friendly. And it's going to be very difficult for a man to pursue you, um, you know, when all he said was hi and you looked at him and frowned at him and didn't even return the. So they are conservative, respectful and afraid to offend. And women today are too often, too easily offended by men who are just simply saying, hello, how are you doing? You know, you, you know, brother can only be shot down so many times. But then you get the pickup artist guy, you get the, you get the smooth talker, you get the clown in the crown that, you know, ooh, mama, I'm feeling you. And now, you know, that broken consciousness in you seems to respond to that. When you just had a guy that just said hello in a very polite way, respectful, manly way, masculine energy, and you shot him down. Number three, lest I take too long, um, why are men not approaching you? You're always surrounded by a pack of women or gay dudes. You, you, you're not individual enough to go anywhere by yourself. And the balance there, of course, is you know, I want you to always keep people involved in your life because it's just safe as a woman. But, you know, you have to learn to, to be able to go places where it's clearly safe enough for you to do so by yourself. You can't always be surrounded by a pack of women just, you know, talking and giggling and laughing. And, you know, that can be one of the uh, most intimidating settings in the world for a man that would be interested in you to see you always encased by a, a group of women uh, or, you know, a bunch of gay men. It's going to be hard for that guy to penetrate those, those defenses. A masculine man is not trying to be uh, in a relationship or not trying to develop a relationship with, with your whole team. So even if you're out, you know, I don't condone clubs, but the reality is a lot of you go to clubs, you know, um, you go, you go to clubs, you know, at least venture off by yourself, walk around by yourself a little bit, or you go to, you maybe you go out to eat with your girlfriends or something, you know, venture off, walk by yourself sometime, go to the mall by yourself sometimes. You can't have all of these people around you all the time because the kind of man that that you're hoping to engage you is not going to engage you in a crowd because a masculine man uh, protects his he protects his heart. And the last thing he wants to do is to approach you and to have your whole team burst out in laughter or disapproval of him. So a lot of you are missing it because you're just never by yourself. You're not even socially available. Number four, most women, number four, why are guys not approaching? Most women don't know how to let a man know that it's safe to approach. He's not, he's not a pickup artist. He's not one of these guys that has a whole lot of smooth talking, you know, and all of this kind of thing. And he can be shot down 15, 20 different times and he'll just move from you to the next one. No, no. The kind of guy that you want to approach is a guy that's looking for a, a serious and sincere relationship. But you, most women have never been taught how to let a man know that it's safe for him to approach. 
He's not going to just, you know, he's not going to run the risk of offending you. So it's, it's your, he, he pursues, you approve. It's your job to let him know that you approve of his pursuit. Now he's going to make you know that he's interested. You can, you know, I was, I was listening to Chingy. Um, she's teaching, you know, she's a relationship coach. Uh, he, I'm actually still here in London. She's a relationship coach here in, 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 in London. And she was talking about how, you know, a man, and it's so true, a man lets you know his interest by his eyes. If a man is looking, if a man is looking, if a man is looking, and if he's looking, not, not, not gazing and staring like, you know, uh-uh, not that. That's, that's, that's weird. But if a man makes eye contact, you know, there's, there's some interest there. But most women don't know how to let a man know that it's safe for him to approach. So he never does. A masculine man, a quality man, a classical man, a king of a man is not going to risk his. Um, he's not going to risk his confidence, uh, his honor until he knows that you approve of the approach. If you look in, if you go to Ruth chapter two, verses one through five, read the whole story and just kind of, you know, take your own, glean your own uh, wisdom from it. But it's, you know, it's the story of, of Ruth and Boaz. And listen to, listen to how this starts off. Ruth uh, is with her mother-in-law. Her, Ruth is at this point, she's, um, She's a widower, her husband, um, or she's a widow rather. Her husband has been killed and now she's made a vow to stick with her mother-in-law, Naomi. And so now they're journeying and they journey to a place where there's a man by the name of Boaz. But listen, listen to how it goes in, in Ruth chapter two, verses one through five. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband, a man of great wealth and influence from the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after one of the reapers in whose sight I may find favor. Naomi said to her, go, my daughter. Verse three. So Ruth went and picked up the leftover grain in a field after the reapers, and she happened to stop at the plot of land belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. It was then that Boaz came back from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And when you read the full story, you'll see where uh, Naomi teaches Ruth how to make Boaz to know that, you know, she approves of his approach. Now, there are some practical things that uh, Chingy laid out for women, and I, and I appreciate it because it's from a woman to women, and I, as a man, I say it's true. She says, number one, if you're in a setting where there's a man that's made eye contact and, you know, he's, he smiles and he looks, you know, when a man is interested, he'll make eye contact and he'll wait for you to make eye contact and hold it. She says, number one, when you see that a man is, is looking at you and if there's any interest, visual interest at all on your part, make eye contact just long enough for him to know that you see him seeing you. Number two, she said. Smile. Once you make eye contact and he doesn't break the eye contact, because if he's interested, he's not going to break the eye contact. And he know he sees that you see that he sees you and you see that, uh, you know, you, you see him seeing you. The next thing you do is smile. And then that says, OK, OK, that's that's a nod. That's a nod. And see, so you're not you're not risking your virtue at this point. And then what happens is 
uh, you, you find a reason to move closer. And then once you make the move to move closer, then you say to him, OK, this is as far as I'm going. You got a green light. Bust a move and then he'll move in. Hello, my name is. And then from there, you can feel the energy you can discern and you can see. But you got to know how to make a man know that it's authorized. You approve of him. See, you can't just let a man look at you and then you look at him and then look off. And then you're looking back again because you, you know, you're struggling with that low self-esteem. He, he can't be looking at me, huh? He can't be looking at me. Well, now you're sending off mixed signals. So when you see a man looking at you, you know, you look at him, you smile, and then, then you can look off. And then you, you look again, he's going to still be looking at you. Y'all get the message. Number five, men don't approach because they've been embarrassed by a woman in the past and there's some trauma there. You'd be amazed at how many men have been traumatized, you know, who men, good men who want a relationship with a woman, but have been traumatized by broken women um, who are addicted to clowns and crowns. A lot of times you have good men that don't approach because they've been embarrassed publicly by a woman in the past. The same women, listen to this very carefully, the same women that enable the behavior of toxic feminine men are often the same ones that destroy the souls of good guys. The same woman that, you know, enables um, a narcissist, uh, a player, to come in and just, you know, wreck her life. If you go down, if you look through her history, here's the same woman that's taken a good, healthy, wholesome, sincere man, and she's broken him with rejection. And, and, and you all are doing it all of the time, not knowingly, not intentionally, but women are doing it all of the time. You are destroying good men. See, if you're not interested in a man, you don't have to, des you don't have to destroy him. You don't have to, de to destroy him because what, what you're effectively doing is you are breaking this brother for the woman that, you know, may be meant for him in the future. Come on now. It's better for you to say, you know, let's just be friends than to say, yeah, I can't believe you. I don't want you. I don't want you. What makes you think I want, you know, you can't break a man like that, especially if he's being honorable, sincere and respectful. You have to respectfully bow out of the situation. Don't break him because what you're doing is you're wrecking the opportunity for a woman that's that's a perfect fit for that man in the future. He won't have the confidence to step. Number six, his confidence is low. Why, is, why, why are guys not approaching? His confidence is low because he knows he's not the type most women are checking for. He's not, you know, he's not six feet. He's not six two. Uh, he's, he doesn't, he, he doesn't have six figures a year. He doesn't have Giorgio Armani suits in his closet. Uh, he's not driving, you know, the biggest Benz or the Beamer or the Bentley. And so because of social media and all of this stuff that women project as being, you know, the, um, standard for, you know, a man that she might view as a potential, he knows that he's not that. And it kind of goes back to number one, you know, he's waiting to get his money right. And what's going on is a lot of times you're trading this guy in and what's going on is this guy is, is like the, the, the packet, the toy that is in the box in 50 different pieces, just not assembled. And what you're doing is you're, you're, you're shoving him aside everything that's necessary, you know, for him to be 
you know, king is in the box. He already possesses it. He just needs somebody to help him to put it together. You're trading that guy in for the guy that's just wrapped. You know, nothing inside, but the wrapping is nice. And, and, and so his confidence is, confidence is low because he knows he's not the type that most women are looking for. Fact about it, I heard Chingy say this as well. Most masculine men, most masculine men that would make great providers and, and great leaders and great husbands and would be faithful are not necessarily um, the sexiest guys. They, they don't have time necessarily to be in the gym two or three times a day. Uh, they're not driving around through town with their sports cars and, you know, hair immaculate and all of this kind of thing because they're usually visionary. They're working on, they're, they're working their careers, they're working their jobs, they're working their businesses, and they're very responsible men. And so they're not always the sexiest guys, but they are uh, the manliest guys. And so many times you are, you are, women are rejecting these guys and you're, you're accepting the, you know, the, the little feminine guy that has all of the Hollywood stuff, but he doesn't, he, he's all style, but he's no substance. And so the guy with the substance, his confidence is low because he knows he's not the type that most women would desire. And here's the weird thing. Mo the, 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 the type that most women say, uh, I hope I don't get in trouble with this, but the type that most women say they want, um, many of these women don't even meet those standards. You want a guy that has a washboard stomach? Well, okay, let's move on. Number seven. Seventh reason that men are not approaching you. Women every day, listen to this very carefully. Women every day are changing the rules. Men no longer have to approach because today women are the aggressors. Toxic sisterhood is killing you all. Those of you ladies that are committed to, you know, queen consciousness and, you know, classical womanhood, I suppose we may call it, your toxic sisterhood is killing you because while you're holding a certain standard, you have, you know, eight out of ten of y'all, your sisters are out here running dudes down in these streets, running them down. Brother don't even have to have, men don't even have to know how to rap no more. They don't even have to know how to have a conversation no more because women are so aggressive. You're changing the rules every day. You know, uh, it, it, go to Isaiah. Let me show you something. In Isaiah chapter four and verse one, it says in the amplified version, and in that day, seven women will take hold of one man. And that day is this day saying we will eat our own food and wear and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our shame of being unmarried. Women have become so desperate and so aggressive today that men don't know the rules anymore. You know, it's it's like before a man can um, approach a woman, it's like she coming at him. And for a masculine man that would really make for a husband material, it's a turn off. So you have brothers out here saying, man, I'm just waiting on a woman that is healthy enough to respond when I respectfully approach. And I'm, I'm just waiting on a woman who's feminine enough to wait and allow me to approach. I'm either dealing with women that 
uh, get offended by me saying something as simple as hello, or I'm dealing with women that won't even give me a chance to say hello before they running me down in these streets. Number eight, why, why are brothers not approaching? Some women present themselves as shallow and vain. And what happens is, see, society says this the way you dress, this the way you carry yourself. And y'all following Instagram and you all out here in these clubs, in these mirrors, taking these booty shots, putting these booty shots on Instagram, on social media, not realizing that you're attracting uh, all of the clowns and crowns. You're attracting all of the one night standers and you're you're repelling the husband material. Every time you follow, you just follow what society is doing. You're presenting yourself as shallow and vain, and many of you are not, but you're a follower. You've not contacted your individuality enough to lead even your own life. And a woman that, watch this, leads with vanity will attract men that lead with vanity. All you'll attract are men that want you for sex, and you will never attract a man that really is looking for something honorable because you're leading with vanity and what you're doing is you're, you're, you're misadvertising yourself. You're misrepresenting yourself. Listen to what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. It says, um, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear for people will be lovers. And the King James, it says men will be lovers of themselves. But here the Amplified says for people will be lovers of lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revelers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. When you lead with vanity, you attract vanity. So you're misrepresenting yourself. So you're advertising the wrong thing. So you're getting the wrong customer. You, you really, you're, you're really preparing chicken, but you're advertising hamburgers. Oh, better, better. Here it is. You, 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 you really, you, you're really preparing steak inside of the restaurant, but you're advertising hamburger. So you get all of the cheap hamburger people when on the inside, you, 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 you really are, you really are offering steak and you're wondering why is it that nobody that can afford steak is showing up? It's because you're number nine. Why are brothers not approaching? I only have 10 and I'm out. Fear of accusation. Fear of accusation. If there ever were a time that a, a, a queen conscious woman is going to have to know how to approve, number one, discern a man's spirit first of all, not just looking at a man for what he looks like, but discern his heart and then approve of his approach, it's now. You know, too many men are getting caught up in accusations. Some are going down rightfully. They've done some dirty, low down things. But you have other brothers who are looking at this and they're saying, well, man, if I if I say hello, if I, you know, what what could this mean for me legally? And the Bible says in Romans 14, 16, let not then your good be evil spoken of. So you have some good men that would love to approach, but they're looking at all of the stuff that's going on and, you know, how complicated and, you know, the political correct thing and all of this kind of stuff. And a lot of these men don't even know how to circumvent all of this stuff. They're interested, but they got to sit back in the cut. And and wait for you to let them know without any doubt that it's cool for them to approach it. It is his job to pursue. It's your job to approve of that pursuit. And then number 10 and I'm done. And I saved this one for last so I could hit it and get out of here. Uh, they ain't approaching because a lot of these dudes are just gay. 
it's a gay explosion out here. And, you know, and I mean, you know, I, I'm just from a different school. You know, this is a time and generation, speaking of being politically correct, that, you know, everybody says there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. It's right. You know, even y'all up in the church trying to say it's right for a man to be with a man. So, you know, I just stick over here with my wife and mind my business and go on about my business. I don't get involved in nobody else's stuff. But a lot of these dudes not approaching because they're gay. And, and you know, uh, everybody gay don't look like it. You, you, got, you got dudes that are as manly and masculine in that sense as I am, that are as gay as, you know, I won't call them RuPaul. Okay, somebody openly gay. They look just like me, talk just like me, just gay as RuPaul. Gay as RuPaul. And it's an unfortunate reality today that women have to deal with. You know, it breaks my heart that you have to deal with it. But a lot of these, that, a lot of these guys that y'all looking at, it, it, they're gay. They want the same thing you want, you know? And the Bible says in Romans 1, 26, 27, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, shown of unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So it's talking about the explosion of men, you know, for some reason being sexually attracted to men. That's the reality. That's what that's what we're living with today. And I mean, I have gay people in my family. I don't understand it. I love them. You know what I mean? I have gay members in my church. Uh, I don't preach about gays every Sunday. I don't make no sermon series about it necessarily, but they know my position. They know what I. But that's what a lot of you ladies are dealing with. And then sometimes these guys are scared to approach because you got so many gay women now. And it used to be when a woman was gay, you know, a lesbian, you know, she looked butch. But now you got lipstick lesbians, just as cute as anybody, you know, on Vanity Fair and don't want nothing but women. So it's, it's a lot of confused messages going on out here. So let me give you this and then I'm out of here because I feel like this one's going to get me in trouble. What to do while you're waiting? As a, as, a, as, a, as a queen conscious woman, what do I do? Well, letter A, live for individual purpose. Live for individual purpose. Stop making a whole campaign out of when am I going to get a man? When am I going to get a man? When is a man coming? When am I going to have a relationship? Have a relationship with your God, yourself, and your individual purpose for being. Fall in love with your purpose. Lose the desperate energy. That's where we have to start. That's where we have, as long as you're desperate, you're going to always give off the wrong energy. And you're going to all, if, if your energy is bad, you're going to always attract the wrong stuff. Let it be. Heal so you can give healthy energy. You know, if, you, if you're a lady that finds yourself in a position where you're offended at every man speaking to you, you understand now that there's some things that need to be healed in you. If you're a woman that is so desperate, you just you got that masculine energy going on and you just running a man down. You need to heal so your energy can be healthy. Letter C. Make certain that you are emotionally and socially available. Emotionally and socially available. Heal so that you can become emotionally available for somebody and then be socially available. You can't just live stuck up in a cubicle in, a, in an office, from an office to your house, to your church. You got you got to get out and you got to live life. You know what I mean? You got to be socially available. Stop feeling the need to always be in the pack. Be socially 
available and emotionally available. There are a lot of you saying, nobody ever approaches me. Well, you're around the same people all the time. They either gay, got somebody, or they don't like you. You gotta go in, you gotta go into other places. You know, you, you young, single, professional, go around the world, just go and visit other places in the world, meet other people, new people. Stop having all of these little in the box standards. He gotta be this, he gotta be that. And just get around and, and meet people and then let her D and I'm out of here. Got into enough trouble today. Work on your conversation skills. You know, practice saying hello. It, it doesn't make you a loose woman to say hello. A man says to you, hello. Hello with a smile. You know, not, not, mm, not a grunt. Hello. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you, sir? Practice that. You're missing great opportunities because you practicing all of this dysfunctional behavior. You saw your auntie and your, 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 your girlfriends who don't have no man. They walk around here grunting at dudes all day that's trying to speak to them. Practice your social skills. Practice your conversational skills. Stop being so difficult. You know, if, if a dude is a fool and he's disrespectful, he'll make it known in a few seconds. But you don't want to be turning off. A, a, a guy that means well and is respectful because you just lack social skills, work on your social skills. Ain't no man gonna just drop out the sky. You got, you got, it's his job to pursue, it's your job to prove. So I hope you got something out of this today. You know, of course, I always enjoy our conversations. Let me pray for you. Father, let something I said today resonate as wisdom, those, dear God, that may disagree in certain areas, maybe they've even been triggered. God, I thank you for ministering to their hearts in whatever way is necessary. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, don't forget to go by my website, rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list, check out my online programs, go to Amazon, buy my books, or just search R.C. Blakes Jr. on Amazon, all of my books will come up. And just know that Lisa and I, we truly, truly love you and we thank God for you. And I want you to know I'm done. I'm done. I want you to know that you're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So guess what? I will see you at the top. God bless you. Until then. We here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.